First, let me thank the Atlantic Council for bringing this uh, topic uh, in and for our host at the uh, Emirates and everyone else, distinguished visitors. 5G is absolutely going to be a revolutionary technology. It is actually going to shape the way we take data, use data more than the printing press did when it came out. It is going to be more revolutionary than the printing press. In terms of power and what it can do for the energy industry, lots of leadership here about reusable energy, how to reclaim it. 5G is going to let you do things like distribute your energy in a much more effective and efficient way yes. in a much faster way. The characteristics of 5G that are going to do that are first, it's speed. You will be able to, with 5G, move your data currently at about 2.5 gig per second, but within the next 18 to 20 months, you'll be able to move data 10, 20 gig per second at a latency rate close to one millisecond, which is going to be about the closest thing you can have to real time and not be in real time. Coupled with the advances in storage technology and chip storage, you, know, you have chips out there today that are at three terabytes. You're also going to be able to move compute to the edge. What that can mean for power distribution is you'll have sensors that will feed your database that will let you know exactly when you need to distribute power, where to redistribute power as needed. You'll get maximum use out of the power you're generating. The other thing that 5G is going to do is give you the capability to have a secure power grid. Today, 4G systems, to completely censor the network, generally the overhead costs more out of the bandwidth than you want to give up because it lowers your production. If you're operating a system at 2.5 gig per second and you need, say, 100 gigs per second to fully monitor that system, no one is going to care. You, won't, you will notice no degradation in the services. At that speed, you can monitor the network down to the component level of the network. You will move the, have the ability to reroute your power traffic or your data so that if there is a threat to your data system, you'll be able to avoid that and keep the data still flowing, keep your power still flowing. You've heard a lot today, a lot of discussions about moving the value downstream. I think the other thing that the power industry from energy will be able to do is become part of the distribution system for 5G. One of the other characteristics of 5G is you do not need cell towers. The 5G systems are run by cores and antenna nodes that are relatively low weight. Everything you have can either hang off a light pole, off the side of a building, um, and you want line of sight or near line of sight with 5G because the power industries have those right of ways and stuff. I think this is another way as part of the energy system to actually generate cash flow inside the, the power business and to expand down the value chain. So I think you will see that happen um, with, uh, with, as 5G comes on. You're gonna see 5G come aboard probably in the next 12 to 18 months. It'll be more ubiquitous uh, across uh, the world and 5G, unlike 4G is going to be driven by government and big enterprise. 4G was consumer driven, 5G is going to be driven by government and enterprise. 5G is machine to machine. 4G was people to people, 5G is going to be machine to machine. It is what's going to let you move massive amounts of data and then couple that with artificial intelligence. You'll be able to do that in near real time and make decisions about your power grid, your security and other systems um, much faster than you can do today. You're also going to be able to take the vast amounts of data you're gonna generate that will not be processed by human speed. There's just no way. The amount of data that we're gonna have on all the power grids and everything else is going to be too much to process strictly with human analysis. You will couple that with 5G real time and be able to do a much greater set of analysis on your data. Countries that adopt 5G, there's very two or three very good economic studies out, probably see a three to 4% GNP growth 
in this, which would also translate down into the power industry. Um, you will see better benefits, and more importantly, the countries that have 5G and then have a secure power supply to go along with that are the countries that are going to draw the innovators. The next sets of innovation are going to come from this technology because what it also does is it consumerizes supercompute. You will be able to get to compute power on a 5G network at an expense level that continues to go down that will give the innovators much more access to supercompute power as you go forward um, in the next, the next 12 to 18 months. I think this will revolutionize the way we think about not just securing the power grid, but securing infrastructure in general, everything from water to power, coupled with the ability, we talked about saving power by using power on demand, demand distribution systems will be much more real time, but you're also going to be able to do that with other utilities like water. A couple interesting facts, if you can control water, moisture content, and the temperature of soil, just those two factors with the right sensors, two things happen. We tend today to overwater by about 25%, even with the best sensors. So you'll reduce your water needs, but you'll also increase food production by about 20% just by controlling those two factors while reducing all the power that's needed to do that because you'll be able to sense exactly when to do the watering. There's lots of other agriculture and medical expectations to that. I'm going to stop here for a minute. I've got another guest here in the audience, uh, Mike Stone. Mike, uh, like myself, Mike was the former CIO for the UK Ministry of Defense. We both have had to work a lot of infrastructure issues, and so I'd like Mike to comment a little bit about Mike. First, does he concur with my comment? This will be consumer, um, not consumer driven, but enterprise driven. And what else would he like to maybe add a little bit about what he has seen in the last couple of years about where 5G is going, particularly around infrastructure? You wouldn't think I was a tech person, would you? <laughs> Don't know how to do the on-off switch. Uh, yes, I absolutely agree that this is going to be enterprise-led. Uh, In fact, I see uh, secure 5G as a fundamental enabler uh, for industry 4.0, for oil and gas 4.0, uh, in, in that uh, same way in which sensors and actors are communicating independently or intercommunicating with each other and potentially making decisions independent of, of humans. And if that's going to happen, then we need to be sure that we're not going to have malicious code being injected and hence the need uh, for secure 5G. And, uh, and I may just um, come back onto that in a, in, in, a, in a second. But if this were to be a consumer-led uh, rollout, then we'd have to have a nationwide 5G network, and that is not going to happen quickly. Uh, partly because the telcos are really somewhat ambivalent uh, to this. Uh, yes, they want it because they want to kickstart uh, the um, stagnating cell, uh, smartphone sales and things like that, but at the same time, they see it as putting at risk their capital assets in fiber. And so there is a, 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 a real ambivalence uh, in relation to it. Thankfully, in the enterprise space, though, uh, the network capability for 5G is already there, and it isn't dependent upon the access uh, of, uh, of, of smartphones. So we can put in place campuses uh, around factories, around universities, around arenas, uh, around metropolitan areas, and somewhere like Abu Dhabi would absolutely be uh, would be perfect uh, for, for that with the line of sight capabilities uh, of, uh, of, of 5G. And what I, 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 the metropolitan side of this, uh, when you think about this, would really underpin uh, the concept of smart cities uh, and the linking of all of the different capabilities, including power and utilities 
uh, etc. Et All of the critical national infrastructure, uh, you might say. A, a quick word, or I should say on, on, in terms of backhaul, it also offers a dividend in terms of uh, a backhaul. So for anybody who's using this, whether it's a metropolitan area or a factory, there's a huge amount of backhaul that becomes available. So that makes available things like real-time interrogation of CCTV, uh, intelligent traffic management systems, uh, the ability to be able to manage huge amounts of data and manipulate it, and essentially put things like the panorama that we saw this morning uh, on steroids. A very quick word on secure 5G, because I said I'd, I'd come back to that, because it, it really uh, my passion is about how we can disrupt defensive cyber, but also how we can uh, disrupt uh, the communications arena. Uh, in terms of uh, defensive cyber, uh, the way that we intend to get an advantage in the cyber arms race uh, is by completely bypassing the operating system. Now, there are, there are lots of uh, attack vectors, uh, but one that, is, you know, that ties a lot of those together is the operating system. Uh, and what we're looking to do through is to go through field programmable graphic arrays and completely bypassing uh, the operating systems uh, the, the, that are out there and enabling the software through those FPGAs. Uh, and on the communication side, well, you've heard from Terry about the speed, the latency, uh, the uh, massive input, massive output, the, the fact that it can support a million active devices in every single square kilometer, which really underpins uh, the Industry 4.0. Uh, but there is another aspect, which is all around uh, network slicing, uh, which allows uh, a virtual element of this huge amount of bandwidth to be dedicated to enterprises and for enterprises to customize that and to be able to allocate that bandwidth to their own applications uh, in the way that they see fit. In a v but this is virtual. So uh, it is a, a revolutionary rather than an evolutionary uh, uh, capability. Uh, and whilst Terry talked about it being uh, as uh, revolutionary as a printing press, I almost see it from an enterprise perspective as being as revolutionary uh, as the railways. Mike, thank you. In an effort to keep us all on time to get us to dinner, Mike and I will be here the next couple days. If you have any questions on 5G, we're happy to, to take those, have a dialogue with you. I do think it will be revolutionary. I do think it's going to make power distribution more effective and let power companies move down in the value chain even further though through data and being uh, a distributor of the 5G network. So thank you very much for your time.